la ciencia How we doing boys? What's up, so boys? back at our esteemed location, the hideaway. 5 p.m. Not too early, not too late. Hoping to get some good cards, a lot of action. If you're liking all the videos so far, make sure to subscribe, boys. Just hit 5,000. That's insane. Get us to 10K. Let's go. Yes, sir. Check out our Instagram, the Next Gen Poker, and buy the merch. Nextgenpokershop.com. Yes, you know sir. it. It's a lock. Um, let's go win some money. I'm coming off a really big loss and hopefully we can turn it around. Let's Get you in there. in there. Let's go. I just want to give a big shout out to Next Gen Poker on YouTube. Frankie, Rosie, and Jello, you guys are absolutely killing it. Thank you so much for the merch, and I'll continue to support you guys. Phenomenal words from the man himself, Chad. Also coupled with a beautiful photo on the slopes. Shout out you, Caden. Boys, if you want to be like Chad, be like Caden. Go to nextgenpokershop.com. Cop yourself the merch. Uh, let's get back to the video. First hand for me, we look down at Pocket Kings on the button. Fun stuff. There are two limps, and the cutoff raises to $6.00. That's not enough. We three bet to $20, and apparently that wasn't enough, as both the limpers and the cutoff call. Gotta be sizing up there, I guess. Uh, we're going four ways to a flop, which comes ace, king, four, two hearts. Showtime, baby. We got the set. Checks to me. Someone's gotta have an ace. Someone's gotta have a flush draw. We're gonna size up here, multi-way especially. I bet $60. Folds to the cutoff, who min clicks it to 120 uh, this is pretty interesting, and the table talk is even more interesting. Yeah, pretty much telling good. you what I got. You know I have your one pair beat if you only have one pair, for sure. It really seems like he is trying to come across as strong here, and as we know in poker, usually means the opposite, which would mean that he's not very strong. So I don't necessarily want to re-pop it all in here if he's not that strong and scare away some of his weaker hands. Um, so I elect to just flat call here. The turn is an offsuit seven, and he leads out for $60, which is just such a tiny bet. Um, this bet can either mean two things in my opinion. One, he is trying to set his own price for a draw if he has that flush draw, or two, if he's just not very confident. I mean, this is a really small bet. We got a little bit cute on the flop, not re-popping it all in. We are not gonna be getting cute again on the turn. I'm all in. All in. Ooh. That's a good bet. I jam for about $160 effective. Only $100 more for him. It's a good bet, I can watch it later. I don't wanna give up my profit for a day, so I'm gonna pull two pair of But that's too much. He makes the fold, scared to lose all his profit. Folds ace four offsuit, face up, folds two pair. Um, a little tilting, and we didn't get it all in versus two pair. Maybe if we jammed all in on the flop, we would have got it all in. Uh, definitely have to look back at that as a potential error for me, that hand. Uh, play wasn't perfect, but we take down a nice one here. What up, ladies? In the middle position, it folds to me, and I open it up to $12. Cutoff calls, and it folds around to the big blind, who also decides to come along for the show, so we're off to a flop three ways, which comes three, four, six, two diamonds. Pretty good flop for queens, and there's a lot of draws that I want to be charging, so when it checks to me, I bet $25. The cutoff quickly calls, and the big blind folds, so we're off to a turn, heads up, which is a kind of weird one, the queen of diamonds, bringing in the most obvious flush draw, but also giving us top set. Our hand is just a little too strong to be checking here, I think, and there's still more draws that I can be charging, so I bet $40 here, and the cutoff snap raises me to $100. Kind of a confusing spot. I'm not exactly sure what I should be doing here. However, my hand is just way too strong. I'm never going to be folding, especially for this price, $60 into a $230 pot. I'm just getting way too good of odds to make the call. So I just go ahead and make the call to assess a river. The river comes to Jack of Hearts and I check it over to the cutoff and he actually checks it back fairly quickly. So at this point, I'm assuming my queens are good. Without thinking much more, I decided to table my queens. I really should have waited and gathered more information on what type of hands he would be raising those turns with. However, I tabled them a little too soon and he mucked his card. So we never get a chance to see what he had. We scoop up a nice little pot our way. Thank you, ladies. We look down here at 
pocket jacks two red ones and we have a straddle pot so definitely one to raise it up and i decided to go for a larger sizing i bet 20 dollars and the under the gun plus one player the tight player on my left he really looks like he wants to three bet but instead just makes the call so that's something to note the button and the big blind call as well it is texas poker and we're going to a flop multi-way um already a pretty big size pot that flop is 972 to spades value from spade draws and single 9x holdings so i do decide to go for a sizing over half pot i go for 50 dollars and something I would say is probably the worst case situation, um, the under the gun plus one player decides to re-raise this $50 bet to a sizing of $135. The reason why I'm extra scared is because this under the gun plus one player is never going to be raising with single nine holdings. There is no nines that I'm putting in this guy's maybe three betting range. Remember, we saw that he was going to three bet but decided to just call instead. So now I'm putting him on pocket nines pocket tens and over pairs another situation he could have ace king of spades and ace queen of spades and we look how we're doing against ace queen ace king of spades and against those queens kings and aces holdings i am doing very awful again i don't have a lot of very good turn in river cards for me so here um i think that it's very nitty to be folding to a single raise when you have an open pair but because of this position boys the position is something we need to take note of under the gun versus under the gun plus one for that reasoning and because of the type player i decided to make a lay down here um thankfully the guy was a nice gentleman and he shows us pocket aces so we were definitely right to be sus of the under the gun plus one player. He was trapping us with aces and losing only $70 is definitely the minimum in the situation. Jacks versus aces. A little in-person read from my player. This hand we look down at pocket jacks in middle position. There are two limps. We raised to 20. We're not messing around. And this time we get one caller, one limper calls. So we're going heads up like it should be. Flop comes ace jack five rainbow. Another set for the boy. And he checks. And so this is pretty interesting because I don't think his limping range is going to consist of a lot of aces. And this is a pretty dry board otherwise. So I elect to check here, play a little bit passively some percentage of the time. And the turn is the nine. It is the second heart on board. He bets $25. Now it's time to not play cute again. We're not messing around. We raise it up to $75. And he makes the call. We're going to the river, which is a seven. No draws really get there at this point, uh, besides eight, 10. He snap checks this river, uh, usually a sign of weakness, which is gonna lead me to sizing small, sizing down for my river bet. I bet just $80, $80 is too much. He makes the fold. So yeah, we take this one down, back-to-back -back sets for the boy, why not? Boys and girls. <laughs> Way to bounce back from that horrible session last night where we lost our career biggest loss ever. We hit back-to-back -back sets on ace-high boards, multi-way pots, money galore. Um, amazing feeling. Let's keep running it up. Let's go. For this hand, we're in the cutoff and we look down at seven eight of hearts. There's two limps to us and I decide to bump it up here to $16. No cheap pots. Folds around to under the gun who makes a call and we're off to flop heads up which comes six, jack, four, two diamonds. So not a bad flop for me. I pick up the backdoor flush draw as well as a gutter. And when she checks to me, I think that this is a great spot to continue with a C-bet. And so I bet $25 and she makes a call. The turn is the king of hearts bringing in our flush draw and she checks to me once again. Again, I'm gonna be barreling on this turn, hoping to put a jack under pressure or a weaker pair like a six or some sort of pocket pair, of sevens or eights or nines under pressure as well and bet $40. Again, she makes the call and we're off to a river, which comes the nine of clubs. So we brick, however, that's okay. She checks to me and I'm gonna barrel again on this. Hope to put a jack under some real pressure and hopefully get a fold to pick up this pot. So I bet $60. Um, however, I wish in the moment I would have sized up a little bit bigger and we see her instantly grab some chips, toss it in for a call. 
and we are going to lose this one. I slide my cards in the middle here and here's where it gets interesting. I'm about to muck my cards until I realize eh, I want to kind of see what she has to gather some information. So I flip over my bluff, showing it to the table. At this point, she is forced to show her cards in order to win the pot. So she flips over king six for the turn two pair. I would have gotten that six to fold on most other turns besides that king. She was not too happy about having to show her cards at the end, as that really gave me a lot of information on her kind of slow playing her hand and ultimately gets kind of upset with the dealer over this and this really goes into how I play the next hand. About one rotation later we look down at 9-8 suited, one of my favorite hands in all of poker and under the gun plus one the same lady who we got into the last pot with opens to $25. Ever since that last hand she's been opening up to pretty large sizes and when it folds to me we're both pretty deep, I have about 500 in my stack and she has about the same and my hand flops pretty well so I decide to make the call in position and we're off to a flop heads up which is a nice one it comes king nine nine so we drill trips on this flop dream scenario against a super aggressive player and even better music to my ears she leads out for 105 dollars doubling the pot size and th this just couldn't get any better i couldn't ask for more i'm hoping that she has something like aces or maybe ace king i think about it for a while hollywood a little bit and just make the call we're off to a turn which comes the seven of spades bringing in the spade flush draw. On this turn, under the gun plus one decides to bet 150. I've got about 340 in my stack and I decide I think I want to be ripping it all in here to avoid hands like ace king of spades, ace queen of spades, or pocket aces which still have outs against me. And so here my mind's already made up, I'm just going to Hollywood for a little and act like I'm thinking about it and I rip it all in for $340 total. Under the Gun Plus One thinks about it for just a little bit before tossing in the call. Huge pot, I know I'm good at this point, and the river comes the jack of hearts. We table our trips, and we are good, and we get $943 shipped our way, and I collect all the spondulics. We are scooping in a big pot, and my favorite hand, 8-9 suited, Let's us bink, baby. The year of the bink. Let's go. In this hand, we look down at pocket kings, a premium in the cutoff, finally picking up a hand. I make it $15. The button to my left calls. She's been playing very aggressive, a very wide range pre-flop, and then the big blind comes along as well. So we're off to a flop, which comes ace, three, six. Multi-way, I decide to check here and thankfully the button checks behind me. We go off to a turn card which is the nine of spades. Now check to me, the big blind looks very not interested in the hand. I bet $20 trying to take it down. The button behind me makes the call and the big blind folds. So we're going heads up to a river which is the jack of hearts. Now, um, pocket kings don't look too good on this board, so I do check and try to get to a cheap showdown. That is not what happened. She bets a hundred now. She over pots it, and I'm not really in a folding mood here. Um, I do have second pair, but um, I underplayed my hand when I checked the flop, and she might think that I just bluffed on the turn. So I do decide to put my chips in the middle. She flips over the eight of spades, thinking she might be slow rolling me here, but then she flips over five of diamonds. She turned her hand into a bluff um, after calling with 8-5 preflop. So we take down a pretty good sized pot and end the session in the black. How we doing boys? What's up? Let's go. Not a bad day. All the boys in the black. I'll start us off. I think I cash with the least. In, in for 400, out for 530. Ooh. Plus 130 for the day. In for 300, out for 520, plus 220 on the day. All right. And the man of the hour. Yep. In for 300, out for 890. So had a good little session going on. Jeff Finally broke back. the streak. We're back, boys. Let's We're go, back. boys. You hear that? Hey, make sure to like and subscribe for Jello catching a dub. We all love to see that. We've been waiting for it. All right, boys. Well, thanks for 5K. Thanks for everything. Keep showing the support. Keep commenting. Tell us how your sessions are going. We'll catch you in the next one. Peace. Next gen, baby. Next gen. Yes, sir.